really didn't matter. They had so many votes right. that they could pass it. But Just this, like of course, not is showing up there for the audit, the Fed bill. Exactly. No. Exactly. This is what uh, Hillary says about whether or not she will be able to be bought by the bankers. Campaign trail. How do you answer that charge that Senator Sanders has made that you're in the pocket of Wall Street or beholden to their interests? Well, look, anybody who knows me knows I'm not in the pocket of anyone, and anyone who thinks they can influence <laughs> anyone me. Anyone who knows uh, me. Who doesn't know me. Mm. Uh, but what I do think is interesting is uh, I've laid out the most comprehensive, toughest, effective uh, plan to make sure Wall Street never wrecks Main Street again. Uh, don't take my word for it. That's what Paul Krugman and Barney Frank and others have said. But the really interesting part of this is how the Republicans have now been running about $6 million of ads against me. Yeah, of course, she can't She can't be bought, right? But of course, right. <laughs> we had Donald Trump. They said, she was at your wedding. Was, I paid her to be there. And, yeah. <laughs> and she words, came back and said, well, I didn't buy him a gift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It makes it all yeah. better. <laughs> but, but I mean, that, that was one of the best put downs I've ever heard. I mean, it's like saying, you know, yeah, I, I hired her to sing or whatever. <laughs> she was part of the yeah. paid staff, the <laughs> entertainment. I yeah. hired her to be there. And uh, of course, you know, we know that uh, she is available. She right, may not she, be able to be uh, sold. She may, may not be for sale, but she can be rented by the hour. Well, she's she's made millions of dollars in speaking fees for banks where she's given uh, speeches that aren't even an hour long, makes millions of dollars. And we've got this article up. Um, I believe Steve, Steve Watson wrote it, um, that she received $6 million from Soros last month. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, billionaire leftist George Soros gave but she her can't $6 be bought. Million. Right. No, she can't be bought. He's not the, <laughs> the man behind the curtain. I wonder, you know, if $6 million doesn't do it, I really wonder what her price tag is. You know, as they say, uh, <laughs> we're just haggling over the price. Well, it's not, it's not just her. We've seen Bill as well. They get paid these outrageous fees. You know, he goes overseas. Or sometimes they give the speeches, as Leanne yep. alluded to, are very short in, uh, in length. So... Yeah, I would say that these guys can be bought off. 125 million in speaking fees since they, her and her husband, have left the White House. Yeah, that, that's when they were nice. dead broke. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dead broke when they left. <laughs> yeah, just give a uh, give a few, um, uh, and we haven't gotten any returns coming yet. We should be getting concern uh, returns in pretty soon. About uh, 7:30 is when they said they thought they would start to collect these. Have we heard anything from Richard in terms of? I, I was wondering if he could get into the Democrat uh, caucus. I'd like to. He's still okay, the same yeah, one. If you guys can talk to him, see if he can mosey over to the um, to the Democrat caucus because it might be more cacophonous. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, let's. Uh, we had some interesting things from Rand Paul when he was here, and of course uh, in Iowa, the Republicans. Uh, it's very uh, the Republican Party is very small compared to the Democrat Party, and the Republican Party there, the smaller Republican Party, is very heavily influenced by. Christian wing. And so we've seen uh, candidates like uh, Pat Robertson do really well there. We mm -hmm. had uh, Mike Huckabee win there in the past. And so that's a large voting block. And so everybody is trying to address themselves to the Christians. It was kind of interesting uh, this last uh, weekend, as um, USA Today put it, uh, Ted Cruz kind of got surreal besides doing that crazy thing with the flyer that they sent out. Okay. Oh. He had... Uh, some speeches that they, as they put it, was were totally bizarre. His closing pitch risks being turned into circus as a reality TV show and a disgraced Fox News pundit appear to be competing to make the weirdest endorsement of the Texas senator. Who would this be? The reality TV star. I looked at this, and, of course, that was uh, Phil Robertson from Duck Dynasty. I was going to say Duck Dynasty. Yeah, and, okay, here's your guess here. <laughs> Who do you think the disgraced Fox News pundit was? Ooh. Oh, Oh, I can't. Dan Rather. No, not no, nope. no. no. <laughs> Glenn Beck. Oh. Really? It's Glenn Beck. I was, I was trying to think of yeah, one that, guy, that always said name. he was like at some famous event and wasn't there. Yeah, so you got one guy has a beard and one guy is a beard. So, you know, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the two that they wow, had there. Wow, interesting. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, Beck has been uh, strongly in Cruz's uh, stand. Right. Yes, but one of the yes. things that they talked about here, which I, I thought was a pretty good way to put it, was biblical correctness. You know, kind of like political correctness. Yes. And of course, everybody is trying to put themselves out there and, and trying to relate to the Christians by quoting Bible verses and that sort of thing. And, and that's, I think, transparently phony, especially, you know, when Donald Trump says two Corinthians. But what offended me far more than that was the fact that Ted Cruz would basically troll him on that. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, as a Christian, that offended me 
so deeply to see him mocking someone who who obviously, you know, everything that, that Donald Trump says makes me believe that he hasn't uh, really got much of an understanding or relationship with Christ. He talks about how he doesn't need forgiveness. But when I hear that, it makes me feel sorry for him as a human being. You mm -hmm. know, part of the Bible says, what does what it profit a man to gain the entire world and, lose his, and lose his own soul? And so that makes me feel very sorry for Donald Trump, the man. Mm -hmm. And I would never poke fun at somebody. If I'm a Christian, Ted Cruz wants to tell everybody his daddy's a pastor and he's a Christian and he's going to poke fun at somebody who says two Corinthians, then I have to say, you know, you're going full Elmer Gantry, Mr. Cruz. You know, this is using your Christianity to try to uh, get people to vote for you. And I have seen Christians taken advantage of so many times by people who parade their Christianity out there trying to sell something, whether it's a car or whether it's themselves, uh, trying to parade that out there and use it as a con. Let's hear what Rand Paul had to say with the uh, Christian clip. Hey, before we go yeah. to that clip, guys, we've got some text updates from Richard out on the road. Okay. He was saying that there were no speakers for uh, the caucuses for Fiorina or Kasich, but there were big applauses for the Rand Paul really? speaking. Really? And that the, uh, the results of this caucus that they're at now um, won't be taken until all the candidate representatives have spoken. Okay, all right. But there's none, nobody speaking for Carly Fiorina and who else? Kasich. Kasich. Okay. And perhaps if we look at this poll. No speaker poll, for Santorum as well. No speaker poll, for Santorum. No speaker for Santorum. Yeah, he's, he's less than half a percent. I mean, he is a flatlining big time. This is the guy who won last time. <laughs> we're supposed to believe, right? Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I never believed that Santorum won. The night before they held the caucus in 2012, Everybody was laughing about the fact that Rick Santorum went with a, his crew and a TV crew into a bar. And everybody, first of all, most of the people didn't know who he was. The people who, you know, who might have known, they were all telling him, sit down, shut up. You're in the way. We want to watch the game. Get out of here. I mean, there was <laughs> nobody that was the least bit interested in him the night before. And we're supposed to believe that he won when he had these massive crowds for Ron Paul showing up. I mean, right. it was just, I thought it was just absolutely criminal last time. So, If we go to the... Uh, these yeah. Polls here, can you open it up to where it shows all the results? Because they're only going to show their favored three. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're only going to show, the, yeah. Well, it's a little bit early, so yeah. we're not really going to have much in terms of that. Let's hear what Rand Paul said uh, in terms of this uh, Christian quote here. You know, I think one of the things about the disconnect between the grassroots and, you know, the establishment Washington Republicans is – I put forward an amendment about a year or so ago, and I said that we shouldn't give any foreign aid to any countries that persecute Christians, any countries that put to death Christians who um, interfaith marriage or people who convert from Islam to Christianity. They, if they have laws on their books that says you are put to death, they shouldn't get any of our money. I've yet to meet one American outside of Washington who is opposed to that, is opposed to my amendment. And yet in Washington, when we voted on it, 18 senators voted to continue sending foreign aid, even if the laws of the country we were giving the money to were to persecute Christians. And so that's, it, I think, just shows you how far apart we are, the grassroots from those in Washington. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know, common sense in America would say, if they're going to be executing Christians, and let's put a name to that, okay, Saudi Arabia, okay, okay. <laughs> If, if they're going to be cutting the heads off of Christians, if they're going to be uh, using all kinds of um, uh, brutal tack, uh, tack, things against uh, people who are visiting their country, pumping out their oil, making the money for these lazy sheiks, uh, turning them into multi-gazillionaires, and then they have the audacity to persecute people who have Bibles for their own use uh, right. and, and what they've done to other people. We shouldn't be giving them any money. Why, Let's yeah, why do that. they need our yeah. money anyway? It's but see, got, that's all results from uh, Huffington Post. You want to check them out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what do they have? You know, well, first of all, when I first walked in here, Trump and Cruz were neck and neck, mm -hmm. right? And I just refreshed this, and, and Trump is up 30.7%, and, and Ted Cruz has dropped down quite a bit. And this is just the last hour. So it was much closer an hour ago. So it looks like Donald Trump is starting to run away with it. And Rand Paul doesn't look too good, according to the Huffington Post. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think it's too early for anybody to know. I don't think that Rand Paul is going to do too well. I wish he would do better, but uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I do think it's going to be a runaway for Donald Trump with this. Do you but think, David, that, Don that 
that Rand Paul made a mistake by going against Donald Trump so much? Do you think he should have? I, I was I was very much put off by that very first exchange. I remember yeah. when the very first debate, the very first question, they asked Donald Trump, uh, oh, well, they asked everybody, you know, raise your hands, you know, like the kids in the school, raise your hands, would you run as an independent if you don't get the nomination? Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, it was. It came across really well for Donald Trump. He was honest about it. So yeah, yeah, I would. You know, he raised his hand. With all of that peer pressure there at the, uh, uh, you know, across the stage, he raises his hand and said, "Yeah, I would if I don't get it." I would. And that's one of the it. things I respect about the guy. You know, yeah. like I said, there's plenty of things he says that I don't agree with, but I do respect his honesty. Exactly. Right. And what I didn't like was Rand Paul immediately getting so upset. And screaming across at him, and I looked just like, why is he that upset about that? I don't really care about parties. And I thought that one of the things that appealed to me about Ron Paul was that he transcended this kind of party loyalty. He would talk about issues. He had issues and that were important to him. He resigned from the Republican Party when they went back against everything that they had promised. It was three terms after Ronald Reagan had uh, been elected. He was very concerned that Ronald Reagan had betrayed the public. He was going to get rid of the Department of Education. He was going to balance the budget. He was going to do a lot of things that he didn't do. And of course, Ron Paul had supported Ronald Reagan in 76 when he lost, report, uh, supported him again in 1980, but then resigned and was very critical of Ronald Reagan not fulfilling his promises, as we now see over and over again from GOP politicians, mm -hmm. as well as the rest of the GOP. So he resigned. And then two years later, he ran as a libertarian for uh, president. And uh, that didn't, he didn't win that, obviously, didn't even come, I think, more than a, a 1% because it's difficult with a third party. He eventually got back in as a Republican uh, congressman, but he was not tied up into the party establishment. And that, when I watched Rand Paul's reaction to that, that really got me concerned about Rand Paul. Is he willing to sell out his principles for access? Is, is this, right. why is the party that important to him, and that really concerned me when I saw it. So I think from the very beginning, I was concerned about it. I don't think Rand Paul is perfect. I don't think any of these guys are perfect. I think we need to talk about where they're right on issues and where they're wrong on issues. He has been the only person who will talk about some issues that I think are vital to this country that will determine whether or not we continue to exist as anything that is even remotely recognizable as America. I don't think we will quite frankly, because right. nobody else is talking about it. When he puts these issues forward, he doesn't get any traction. Well, the fact that we've got a Democratic Socialist as the front runner there, yes. neck and neck with Hillary Clinton, yes. that's yes. pretty shocking. And the support for Bernie Sanders is predominantly for the young. They said mm -hmm. if you look at the Democrat supporters, it, it splits between the young and between somebody who identifies themselves as a female, then it splits. We have Richard back with us now. Did you say? Okay, I guess not. Um, oh, there he is. Richard is there. Okay, let's go back to Richard. Richard. Or David. Uh, well, it looks like they've actually finished with all the speakers. It is hard to hear in the gym because the, the people administering the event do not have any amplification. So any noise in this gym, the acoustics, everything else drowns out the speaker up front. So therefore, obviously, we had to be very quiet. And then uh, also, like I say, right now, they are physically, literally passing out those paper ballots where people are going to fill out and put the name of their candidate. So I'll tell you what, I think within the next probably 15 to 30 minutes, we're probably going to have some numbers here from this event. So it's going to be very interesting. Also, I did hear you talking about Rand Paul earlier, and it has been frustrating that Rand Paul hasn't taken uh, an approach that I think would uh, lead him to a higher place in the in the uh, in the race, or you know, or even get more issues out there. I, like I was talking to Alex on, on during the show today, I wish Rand Paul would have just hit barbed wire on all kinds of these: 911 Truth, GMO, fluoride in the water, eugenics, vaccines. You know, the whole litany of everything that's going on. The New World Order out there uh, creating ISIS and funding ISIS and and weaponizing ISIS. Well, he did bring that up. Yeah, he, he's kind of he's kind of gone into he's moderated his dad's positions on a lot of issues. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm still for yeah, I, I still understand the issue with the Fed, but let's instead of maybe you know ending the Fed, let's audit the Fed and and kind of leave it at that. So you know he he seems like he's pulled back a little bit there because I think he feels like the libertarian base has nowhere else to go, and I think he's unfortunately right about that. Uh, but I think it's also undermined his support with his base as well. Well, right. I think he would have had a bigger, bigger support, bigger base. So, uh, 
Yeah, I think that uh, it was a mistake. I mean, look, he had a heck of a platform last Thursday with Donald Trump leaving the big vacuum. It was time for Rand Paul. Just this is it, Rand Paul. This is the big show. This is.